All right, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be talking about how to mount an SMB share or an NFS share on your Synology NAS. This means you can connect to another Synology NAS or any other NFS or SMB server and access the files just like you would on your local computer mounting that server. This can be really helpful for things like virtual machines or if you've just got two different NASs that you need to move files in between. And so it is remarkably easy to do. All you have to do is go in and log into DSM and go ahead and open up FileStation. Then from FileStation, all you have to do is go into Tools, Mount Remote Folder, and if you're doing SMB, do CIFS, which is an old standard for SMB. It's actually SMB version one, but it will work all the same. All right, and so here, we're just gonna type in the path to that remote SMB share. So we're gonna do backslash, backslash, the IP address, slash the SMB folder name that we'd like to mount. Then just do your SMB login account. And here it will let you choose where to mount it. Basically with any Linux system, you actually create a folder and make that the mounted folder. And so it will basically create a photography folder. That's that name of the SMB share I'm using within one of my shares. But anytime I click on that, it will actually be virtually linking to the SMB share. And we can also choose to mount it automatically on startup. Just hit mount. And just like that, I can double click on it and I can see everything that's in my remote NAS. And it will even show up as this remote folder right here, which is helpful to know. Then to unmount it, select the folder, tools, unmount. And just like that, it's unmounted. And so this is an incredibly easy way to always have that drive mounted. I use it all the time for virtual machines. And I also actually have two different NASes that I use. One that's very fast for my videography, that's actually a free NAS build. And one that's my DS1819 Plus that is used for bulk storage. So I edit my videos off of the free NAS build. Then I transfer them using this protocol onto my DS1819 Plus for archival purposes. And really, that's all there is to it. Go ahead and leave any tutorials you'd like me to make in the comments below, and have a good one. Bye.